I get a lot of questions about the old sawmill, um, people sort of wanting to build a similar design. So I'll just go through and give you a close up look at it. So if anyone out there wants to build one themselves, they can sort of see how it's put together. And it hasn't been running for a couple of years, so I'll give it a good service and uh, change the oils and um, get into cutting some logs. It's a uh, engine out of a Datsun 120Y, trusty old Nissan Datsun. Uh, it's 1200cc, four cylinder. So this is the, uh, the drive from the engine, the main shaft here, two bearings on that shaft, and then another belt drive to this um, 90 degree gearbox which runs the horizontal blade. That belt's not looking too flash but it'll be alright for now. At the end of the shaft there's a little hydraulic pump. There's one hydraulic motor to run it along the rails. See this one here drives the shaft which runs these chains and that, that pulls itself along the rails. And there's another hydraulic motor here which raises and lowers the, the mill. And uh, one more hydraulic motor here um, which controls the side to side movement. That's up and down and side to side. So it's all hydraulically driven along the rails and adjusting the cut. So that whole thing moves along on these rails and then it's got a slider at each corner and it goes up and down here. So it can cut a like a 1200, 1400 diameter log, no problems. This roof is on hinges so if I have a really big log to cut that just hinges back out of the way. And it's got these chains on either side of it. They keep it locked in place so it doesn't bounce up and down when it's cutting. One chain going right around and up and then on the other side this one comes down here and down to the bottom of the frame. When you raise it up and down it just sort of climbs its way up and down the chains. This is the, um, the gauge for how deep you're cutting so that slides up and down and um, there's a little pointer just there so you can tell how, how deep you're going. So it'll do a maximum of around nine and a half inches cut deep and um, six inches uh, that way. So you can do a, a nine by nine and a half by six inch beam. That's the maximum cut. I'll change that oil and um, do a wee bit of maintenance and then uh, crank it up. surface is nice and clean. Should be good for another couple of years. Right on high, that's spot on. I'll check the oil in that gearbox. Oh, that's pretty full. Plenty in there. A few grease points to get. Because the whole mill frame slides on these rails here, um, on those blocks, I'll give that a bit of a wipe down and spread some oil on there so it reduces the friction. Just got a paintbrush with some oil on it, I find that's the easiest way to do it. And that'll make it slide easier. That's 
slides on this back side as well. Just makes it so much easier on the uh, hydraulics. We'll do all the chains as well. And I'll do these corner sliders as well. Clean out that radiator. So that'll keep the worst of the sawdust off the radiator. Every now and then I'll just give it a bit of a tap and that gets rid of it onto the ground. So these are the teeth. They just go in there like that. And I've got a, a groove in the back there which follows the groove of the blade. And this is the locking piece which holds, holds it all in place. And so that just slides out like that. You replace the teeth and then slide it back in. You put the pin through there and then you just pull it down like that and it winds those teeth out um, but the teeth in there are pretty good so I'll leave those in for now I'll buzz the top off that log then uh, sharpen the teeth Now because that log is a little bit low, I'll have to put a beam under it just to bring it up. Because ideally the bottom of the log should be sort of level with the top of the rails. And it's well below, so um, I'll just prop it up and try and get it as even as I can. That's spot on now. Both ends are 96 to the middle, so that's right in the middle and level. So we're going to get the most out of it. A wedge in position so that it doesn't move, and uh, we can get that mill going. just took a little bit off the uh, small end of the log and um, slightly more off the big end so that should um, cut nice and evenly all the way through the log. This is my homemade blade sharpener. It's just a windscreen motor off an old car with a grinding stone on the end of it. It's got these little guide blocks to get everything centered. Only takes a very light touch and it's looking pretty good. I'm using an oil stone just to get rid of that burr at the back of the teeth. Razor sharp now.
So I'll just be using this tool here, a heavy blade with a wooden handle on it, and just um, knock, the, knock the dirt off like that. Because otherwise if you leave all that dirt in there it just blunts the blades pretty quickly. That's got the worst of it off, it's mainly just that end where it was dragging. That uh, small end's not too bad. It's only a five minute job but it makes all the difference to how long the blades stay sharp. Okay, so that's the first log done. Um, I probably could get another couple of 4x1s four by, four by out of that, but the deeper you go, the more likely it is to um, sort of bend what's left, and you don't even get a straight cut anyway, so I think I'll leave it at that. The rest can go to firewood. So I got all these 4x2s out of it. 6, 8, 9 4x2s. And, uh, well, they're slightly bigger than 4x2 because I like to allow a little bit extra just for planing. I like to stack them with a bit of bit of a gap between each one just so the air can go through it and uh, it seems to dry it out a lot quicker like that. And I've just got some fillets um, between the layers. I've got a couple of six by ones out of that as well and, and a couple of four by ones so um, I'll just leave those till I've got a, enough for, for one layer and then put those down. So that's one log, on to the next one. Another few four by twos out of that one. Not a lot of meat left in there.
got some nice six by twos and four by twos out of that log. Um, they run about 4.6 meters long, so decent bit of length. Probably treat them with uh, copper naphthenate, um, which is a sort of paint-on copper-based preservative. I could take them in and get them pressure treated, but it's another expense and um, it's another hassle having to drive them in there and back, so I'll just do it myself. So I've spaced those out, you know, like a centimetre between each board and um, a couple of centimetres deep between the fillets. That'll just let the air flow through and uh, take all the moisture out of them pretty quickly. They should be ready to use in three or four months. Should be bone dry if I put a bit of roofing iron over the top. Uh, it's a good old mill, it just keeps going. I'll give it a bit of a brush down, get all this get all the sawdust off and uh, put a cover over it for next time so that's good it worked perfectly thanks for watching guys see you next time